Welcome back for more AP Bio. In this particular lecture, we're going to deal with building cells and changing how we're going to view the world. So in particular, we're going to look at modern synthesis and modern biology. There's lots of things that are going to show up on the AP test and some text references. So everything that we've done so far is as far as we can push the macroscopic view, or at least for now, our macroscopic view of life. So what we're going to try and do is zoom in a little bit more. And when we, to do that, we're going to need some instruments. So this gentleman here, Zacharias Janssen, is credited with creating something that we would call a microscope, which is just two lenses that are stuck together by a tube that one focuses itself onto the other, and then you focus the last one with your eyeball, and the result is we can see images. He isn't the one who made it famous, though. It was actually a gentleman by the name of, or two gentlemen, one Robert Hooke, and the other one is Anton van Leeuwenhoek. And what they were known for was their drawings using microscopes. And in particular, Hooke looked at a piece of cork. And what he noticed inside of the cork are these little chambers or little spots. And he said, oh, well, those remind me of cells. Cells meaning a place where you'd put someone who is in an insane asylum or in, in a jail. And the result was we named these little things cells because of his statement. The catch is those aren't cells. The, that's actually the frame of where a cell was. In reality, he actually looked at non-living tissue, stuff that was created by life but was never alive. So rather ironic. So ultimately, what happened was through the work of several people was the development of something referred to as cell theory. And cell theory turns out to have three postulates. First one is, if you are a living organism, you have cells. Second postulate is the basic unit of life would be cells. Third postulate is cells come from cells. So when we look at cells, we put them into two categories. One is called prokaryotic. The other one is called eukaryotic. And there's lots of differences between them. but We'll do with those later. We'll just call one of them prokaryotic, one of them eukaryotic. All of the cells, however, are made out of parts, so they have components made them. So we have to talk a little bit of chemistry, which is a little bit cheating, but that's okay. And what we're going to do is assemble substances out of what we call monomers. And monomers just mean single parts, and if you string them all together, we make polymers, or many parts. Hidden amongst all of that is the generation of water. And water turns out to be rather important in biological systems, namely because a lot of what we are made out of is water. But also water allows for a few weird things to go on. And that's all a result of the bonds that are found inside of water. One of those things that we can make are what we call lipids. Lipids are fats. And they're strange only because they don't really have a defined version. There's lots, there's a lot of variety of fats. In particular, the one that we're going to look at is what we call a phospholipid, which is this thing here, which we'll deal with when we start building the cell. Hidden inside of phospholipids, or amongst phospholipids, which we can form as the outside of the cell that we would call a membrane, is where I can dot inside of it a whole bunch of things that we call proteins. Proteins are massive chains of monomers called amino acids that interact with each other. They fold up and then they three-dimensionally twist on itself to create structures that we call proteins and there's untold numbers of proteins in existence. Also hidden in that cell membrane will be things called carbohydrates. We usually think of carbohydrates as food source, but they're used for other things such as identification and sometimes they're signaling molecules and there's all sorts of versions of this. The simple version of them are called monosaccharides, but we can make polysaccharides out of them where we make massive chains. The last of these molecules that help build living things isn't found inside the membrane. It's actually found within the cell itself, and that would be nucleic acids. The most famous of them is referred to as DNA, but there's a, another version called RNA, which is far more versatile. And these things here are used to transfer information or genetic information from one organism to another. We're going to figure out later on how we know that. But we also use these things to make reactions occur. We build structures out of them. We even use them for energy. So when we look at plants, or when we look at cells, they turn out to have three components in common. 
We're going to deal with this again later, but they turn out to be a cell membrane. They happen to have some type of genetic information, typically DNA, and by typically I mean we have yet to find an example where it's not DNA, and something that is actually not mentioned in this figure here, but something called a ribosome, which we'll deal with later.